we are very close to finishing the day off and we're getting the Oliver Twins back. Now, who thinks that they've made their game? No? Yes? They, they've long gone. <laughs> so, do you think they've put all our ideas into it? Or do you think that they've, they've cheated? And they've made their game and used none of our ideas? <laughs> so... Can anyone remember what ideas we had? What, what ideas did we have? Our, our Argos um, with interdimensional portal. Okay. okay, and who was the person that gave the idea? Is Gareth still alive? Is Gareth in here? No, he's going to have to sell the idea to someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we had the Argus idea. What other ideas did we have? CD32, isn't it? CD32, yeah. That one was the Egyptian tablet. Egyptian tablet, yes. And a museum. And a museum. So, yeah. unicorn, yeah, I remember that one. Uh, <laughs> any, anything else that we forgot? I like the idea. <laughs> oh. So we can all say that he did the game? Okay. okay, I am going to hand you over now. Oh, joy. Uh, that one, okay, fine. Hang on. Right. Hello. So, as uh, mentioned, I am the advance party. Uh, see me? Yeah, right. Um, can you see the screen? So... And why is the flex not working? That's all we need. Has it crashed on me while I brought the computer up? Uh, look at that. Why would it not change the screen? Has it crashed? It just won't change. Hang on. So do save. It says it's safe. I'm going to close it and open it again. Please come back. You don't need. You don't need um, things to not work while you're trying to do this. No, it works now. How are we doing? Right, okay, so it's just, just one of us. Andrew's probably legging it down the road with embarrassment, thinking, oh crap, that didn't go as according to plan. Uh, I did say this was kind of a first and it was a bit of a challenge. Um, and I appreciate it's coming up to 4.30, so we're also running a bit late, but hey, so were you guys, so that gave us a little bit of a uh, head start. So, um, the theme, well, it was chosen by Gareth, so we'll all blame Gareth. Um, you had to find amazing items that customers seek in their local Argos store, and you have to travel through portals to fantastic worlds to recover them. So we call this the Magical Argos, okay? Uh, and uh, there's the title. Um, we had some characters, um, so we got the player. Um, uh, it says they're uh, unknown gender, but actually we've made it a guy about 30. Um, I say that because the guy speaks and we had to choose a voice. So it's a guy, English, about 30. So. Um, Chloe, young uh, lady assistant um, in a red uniform. So she's going to uh, be in this door asking you what you want. Uh, we've got the janitor out back uh, who is actually a bit magical and he's kind of your Mr. Ben shopkeeper. Um, 
and the shoppers come in and they ask for crazy stuff. So we've got Emily, and she comes in and she wants a baby unicorn. Hello. Oh, you didn't, you didn't just leg it then? <laughs> it hasn't been tested. It hasn't been tested. Well, they've got some testers. Um, but yeah, if you want to be testers... Download Richcast. Currently, um, yeah, we will put options in Richcast later that you can kind of segment it. But at the moment, it's either people that we name or everybody. Uh, so we just said everybody. So, um, so we've got uh, customer number one, Emily. Sorry, I'm looking a bit uh, ragged now. Uh, who wants to buy the baby unicorn? We've got James who wants to get the Sega Mega, 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 yeah, there it says Mega Drive CD32. We'll see what it actually says in the app because there was a lot of copy and paste in, trust me. Um, we got Shopper 3, Freddie Thompson. We figured Freddy Krueger, so it's Freddie Thompson, Engli English version, Freddy. Uh, he wants to get that hockey mask. Um, and then uh, shopper number four is Amelia Sullivan. Did you manage to get any audio in, Andrew, or was that...? It's got a little bit of audio. It's got a little bit of audio, okay. And uh, Amelia Sullivan, who wants the magical stone tablet. Um, so we did the locations. So here are some of the locations that you will find. We've got the Rainbow World. We've got... Um, the scary world, I've done them in the wrong order, but anyway. We've got the retro world, now renamed Retcon. <laughs> it's Rainbow Realm, Retcon. Uh, I forget what the scary one is uh, called, and the museum. Um, scary world, we left it at scary world. Okay, um, now because I didn't actually have a lot of time because I've only just finished the script about 10 minutes ago and Andrew's been hastily copying, pasting, copying, pasting. So the script is done. doing all the art, if you don't mind. So he was doing the art and putting it all into Richcast um, and not testing it. Um, so at this point, we're probably going to flip over, Andrew, yeah. to you just showing um, what you've got on your screen. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll see if it actually runs. I was going to say, can we just see if it does run? I don't know, has anyone got it running on their mobile now? <coughs> ah, okay. it does. There we go. And you've got your assistant, you've got your assistant. Yeah, excellent, right. Hmm. We haven't actually had time to actually run it ourselves yet. No, so. So, um, and by the way, it's not all there. Um, he, he was doing it as quickly as he could, getting into Richcast, but um, yeah, maybe it was a little bit too ambitious. But you've got to try these things, haven't you? Stretch goal, you know? Out of your comfort zone. Um, we decided that actually going um, between all the locations and finding clues in each location to unlock other locations, to then find the objects and then return them to the store was definitely a stretch goal too far so we decided we decided to um, have the janitor appear as if by magic in each location um, <laughs> not and not just give it to you well, he, it is at the oh it is at the moment okay <laughs> I was gonna say he gives you a riddle he gives you a yeah, riddle so he didn't get the riddles in he just gives you the object for now well, anyway I can give you all the text for the for the riddles um, I can I can open up in fact I will open up and I'll show you actually how I was doing the script um, I think that's, yeah, let's see how we did. We're going to see that in a minute, and then that's the end slide. So if I just come out of this, and I'll quickly go into, I was using Google Docs so that both Andrew and I um, could kind of reference the same text. So I was typing it in, and he was actually pasting it across into Richcast, um, sort of live, so he's got it on his as well. But if I go up to, um, I'll just uh, scroll around this, hang on a second. Right, you're going to... You hold that there. I'm going to use two hands on my keyboard. Lovely assistant. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right, hang on. So you can probably see that screen. So basically, uh, the first thing to do was set up the document, uh, put in what the locations were, the characters. Oh, Philip, you can't see it. You can't see it. Hang on a moment. I assume... Oh, yeah. Duplicate screen. Right, go. Uh, 
Right. right. So back in Google Docs. Okay. Uh, so basically, I put in um, what my characters were, um, descriptions of each one of the shoppers and what they were looking for. Um, so there's the shoppers, blah, 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 blah. Um, then a bit more description on all of those, a bit more description on the locations, and then um, straight into the dialogue. Um, I was going to use the, as if by magic, the janitor appears a couple of times, so that might appear a couple of times. Um, and then in each version, um, the, character, the customer goes into the shop, um, uh, <coughs> speaks to the shop assistant, says what they're looking for, the player interrupts. Basically, Chloe hasn't got any of these items. Let's be honest, a baby unicorn in Argos, it's not going to happen. However, the player interrupts and says, well, I might be able to find that for you. Um, and then customers, uh, well, actually the shop assistant and Emily are absolutely delighted that you may go off and find these. And then when you do come back and return them, uh, a little bit of dialogue um, of you coming back and, and uh, saying there it is and um, then a fair price has to be paid by cash in that case. Uh, That's an Argos thing. They like you to pay. They do. Uh, so anyway, and then basically I've done the script for each one of those. So go off, get, go like, I want this, go off, find this, come back with this, pay for it, take it out, that, one, that mission's complete. Um, that's all fine. Then for each... Um, adventure, so there's a little stone tablet, stone tablet, then the adventures, da da da. So the narrator, welcome to Rainbow Realm. This is the bit I didn't get to. Oh, welcome to a, a world of vibrant colors and sparkling magic. Here, light dances and dreams take flight. As if by magic, your janitor appears. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, he's going to set you a riddle. Um, all the riddles are there. Uh, I've got them. Da, 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 da. In hues of gold and emerald green, where dreams take shape and wonders are seen, seek the place where the sky meets the earth, where the baby unicorn quenches its thirst. What are your options? The forest, the river, or the castle. And each one, depending on what you choose, uh, uh, gives you the um, answer. So you can say, I'm going to follow the river. There's a typo there. I'll follow the river. Andrew, don't copy that typo. You haven't got to put this in any. I've got all my own typos, so I don't need you. <laughs> um, and obviously, if you pick the uh, river, well done, the river is shimming a pathway between the two worlds where the place, the baby unicorn, can often be found quenching his thirst. There you will find your baby unicorn. Yay! We're going to run out of time. I think we ought to just show okay, what so we've got. Okay, flick, flick to your computer. <clears throat> okay? You don't want to just do it on yours? It'll run on yours. Come on, there's a proper chat. Run, which cast? I know I've done it on here, but you do it. Fine. Okay, we're going to drive on mine. You were just doing it on mine because I created it on mine. But Will you drive? Oh, yeah, I suppose. You okay, I'll, I'll be the mic holder this time. Oh, okay. Sign in failed. Forget that. Just go and just flick the cable across. Because you can't remember the past it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. Okay, so this is... So this is what Witchcast looks like when it boots up. Uh, we wanted it to just look like a YouTube, Netflix or whatever, but they're actually all games. And you've got this tab along the bottom. Yes, you can see it. For the premium games that we create or we commission people to create. Uh, community, that's where people just upload their own games, like what we have just done. Uh, oops, it's just taking a bit of time to fill in. Oh, look, there's one just been added. Magical Argos, wow. Um, and then my projects, obviously, working. Uh, I've got lots and lots of uh, titles. So, oh, that was just for fun, just to prove I could do it, really. Anyway, let's not do that. Um, so you want to go to my project so you can show the edit first. Okay. You want to see how it was made? I think so. Okay. Oh, it's got music. Anyway, don't worry about the music. So I'll go in and just show how it was made. All drag and drop. And yes, there's lots of spelling mistakes. I have spotted several, but I was typing fast and stuff. So anyway, so uh, it's all about creating flowcharts. So here's a big old flowchart. Uh, oh, look, there's four objects. A unicorn. 
stone, a scary, should say scary mask, yeah, it does say scary mask, or a CD32. Um, and you get a little bit of an introduction here through the shop, and then at the moment she just asks you, what are you trying to get? I, and you can do that. Uh, I've got an inventory screen, spent too long on an inventory screen. Uh, the fantasy world, that's where you get, so these are different pages, so uh, they've each got their different flow charts. Can't spell fantasy, but hey, um, whoops, that was obviously just a thing. Typo. Typo. Uh, fantasy world, a scary world, a retro world, an ancient world, and there's not much in each one, as you can see. But if we just go back uh, and just follow it through, you can effectively just at any point just test it uh, and say, go on then, uh, just play it. Oh look, magical Argos, it's in the high street. Here's going into the shop. You make it full screen, I can't. Oh, hello. Hi, welcome to Magical Argos. What can I get you? Well, I'd like a unicorn. Come on, speech is supposed to work on this. I'd like the unicorn. Oh, right, I'll... Hi there, Chloe. I am on a mission to find something truly magical for my daughter. Shush has been dreaming of having a baby unicorn. I bet she Do you has. happen to sell them here? Oh, how adorable. Unfortunately, we don't have baby unicorns in stock. They're quite rare, you know. Actually, Chloe, there might be a chance. I heard from a colleague that we might have a baby unicorn figurine tucked away in the warehouse. The Let me go check. Really? That would be amazing. Emily, we might just have a surprise for your daughter after all. Let's see if we can find it for you. Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you so much for checking. My daughter will be over the moon if we can bring home a baby unicorn. You've been writing too much script. Oh, the magic portal. Go through the magic portal. Right, it probably needs a bit of an introduction to, hey, we've got a magic portal out the back. <laughs> right, okay. Just, so <laughs> oh, here's Walt. He's come to tell me. Oh, he just gives me the unicorn. Oh, he's going back now. Oh, he was supposed to tell me a little bit about the unicorn, and then you Emily, zoom back in to news. the shop. I managed to find a baby unicorn. Here it is. Please look after her. Oh, my goodness. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you so much. I can already imagine the joy on my daughter's face when she sees it. It's my pleasure, Emily. It's always rewarding to bring happiness to someone's day. Now, Chloe here will need to process the payment before you can take it home. That's right, Emily. I think a fair price would be £2,000. I assume you'll be paying by card. <laughs> yes, I don't carry that kind of cash around. Wonderful. If you can insert your card here and enter your PIN, well, complete the transaction. Excellent. The baby unicorn figurine is officially yours, Emily. Your daughter is one lucky little girl. That's I hope great. it brings her endless joy and magical adventures. Thank you so much. I can't one. wait to see but the smile on her face. This nah, little unicorn will be loved forever. World. Okay, so, um, I mean, there would be other things and it should be other customers turning up, but hey, let's go for the scary mask. Hi, this might seem like a strange request but I am on the hunt oh, for a genuinely a scary horror mask. You know, something that can send shivers down the spine. Any chance you have one of those in stock? Oh. That's quite a request, but not the craziest I've had today. Um, computer says no. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I can't help you today. Hold on, Chloe. You know me. I love a challenge. Really? That would be great if you can find one. Freddy, it seems there's a possibility. Let's see if we can find the perfect horror mask for you. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for going the extra mile. I can't wait to find a mask that will give everyone a good fright on Halloween. Ooh, through the portal. <laughs> Ooh, scary ice. Go to the scary ice. That's where you're going to find a scary mask. Oh. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. Um, how, do, how do we do it? Besides putting all the bits and pieces together. Oh, hello. Then you got your Freddy well, he's, he's, Krueger mask. mask. He's going yeah. back again. He didn't do the riddle because I didn't get time to do the riddle. I riddles. have some spine chilling <sighs> news for you. I should have been asked the riddle and the then answered it. Scary mask you were yeah. looking for. So, um, unfortunately, we did not this. achieve as much as we wanted. Oh, that's um, horrifyingly fantastic. So, what I was this doing for generating all the text perfect. and all... Thank I was going to say all the logic, but it turned out to be riddles more than anything else. Um, I was basically using ChatGPT 
giving it all the instructions, saying who the characters were, what the descriptions of the characters were, what they were looking for, where they were looking for them, and then asking ChatGPT to generate me some dialogue. Obviously, you can't use what it generates first time, so then I have to go in and sort of tweak it. Um, and so that's, and then I was basically copying and pasting um, bits and pieces from ChatGPT, asking it to regenerate, try another piece, change the riddle around a bit. Maybe the riddle's better if I find it in the castle, not the river, or vice versa. Um, so I was kind of doing that um, and laying it all out in a nice structured way, which I just showed you. Whilst Andrew was in Mid Journey, uh, generative AI um, package, generating all that artwork. Um, so, all the artwork is original, kind of, if you can count um, Mid Journey. Um, so, so that was the, the museum. His, his Mid Journey, well, if I go right back to the beginning of all the stuff that I was working on, see, I'm, a, I'm like an artist if you give me AI tools. So, let's start with the Argos shop. I thought that looked all right. So. <laughs> It sort of gave me a few different high streets, and I thought, yeah, we could dub that one in, and I changed that purple one. Um, got some girls, so that's not a real girl, it's an AI-generated thing, which is good, because people get offended if you take their photos off the internet and uh, use them. So, get some magical world. We thought that one looked particularly nice. That looks like where you'd find a unicorn. It definitely looks like uniform. Suddenly, I tried to get that girl to have a slightly different look, and it all went horribly wrong. It went into cartoon. <laughs> it went horribly wrong. It, so forget that. I sh it doesn't give you a chance to delete it in your history. Anyway, um, and then we wanted it to be down that you're in the world. It was very yellow brick road. We were like, yeah, let's. Um, and but we're, we're then trying to get, that's an obvious single path. And Philip had written the script with the idea that you can go to the river, the castle, or the woods. And if, and if he'd had time to generate more pictures, he would have generated each one of yeah. those, and it would tell you the after you've done the riddle, not that we got time to put the riddles in, you'd actually go to that place and find there wasn't a unicorn. But if you clicked the right place, you'd actually see the picture and you'd see the unicorn. That yeah. was the plan. Yeah. And in the book, The Wizard of Oz, and obviously we, we made the, the Dizzy, wonderful Dizzy, which is based on Wizard of Oz, the book always is on about the, the different paths in the world of Oz. But uh, in the film, it's always a single road. Oh. Actually, no, with the, see the scarecrow, and it does get a choice at the scarecrow. Anyway, the point is, anyway, that's the one I used eventually of uh, Chloe, our assistant, and I've got two versions of her, which is quite good, so that she can walk in, do her piece, and walk back out. Generative AI, I, a few years ago, I had to do all of this by hand. Um, so these are all my hand sketches of all the locations of the Spectrum one, and then some of you may have played it, if I look in here, there is a spectrum, wonderful, dizzy. Uh, for some of you may have played that on spectrum. Um, it's free, just download it um, either on our, our website, oldercoons.com, or on bigfoot.com. As you generally need to download it, you can play it in the browser. Um, this is a spectrum emulator. Anyway, anyway, yeah, so this is you inside the world, um, and it was kind of going to start to give you choices. Uh, this is me working out the back office uh, with the portal. Um, yeah, I've got back office with the... Uh, it, uh, I've run out of time, and that was easier. I, I sort of done that. I did the signpost. I didn't get it in, um, but you can see the signpost I went for. Um, started to look for unicorns. That just looks like a horse. That looks like a horse with a... Yeah, so we were trying to get baby. I think it's one of these that yeah, we chose. Left, top, left. top left. Okay, but you obviously you just describe what you want. So a cute baby white unicorn with, and off it goes and draws stuff. So it's quite cool. And there you go. That's the one we used. Uh, stone tablet. Yeah. So I wanted a better engraving. So I said with more deep engraving of weird symbols, and you end up with that. So I picked one of those. Picked that one. In fact. CD32, it's got no bloody idea. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, Mid Journey has no idea what CD32 is. So actually, the one piece of the one piece of uh, artwork uh, of the CD32 I pulled off Wikipedia, which I think you can kind of get away with pulling off Wikipedia. It, um, scary masks, yep, they're scary. Uh, I think I went for the bottom, bottom right. Um, cut that one out, and then we started to go for Walter. Um, yeah, some sort of Asian dude. Um, I picked this one. Uh, I think it was it was that one. It was that one. The one in the top left. So got a, a new version of him and cut him out. Scary World. I thought the bottom right was quite a good version. So I asked for a big version of the Scary World. It's, it's 
and then RetroCon. It's like, uh, I thought this one was quite cool. Um, so anyway, I'm not trying to promote um, mid-journey. I'm just opening people's eyes to the fact that you can do AI art nowadays, and you can do it very quickly and make full stories. Give me the inside of a, a pyramid that's suitable for a video game, I think I said, and I ended up with this. So it's quite cool. Uh, if we go back, we can see some of this in-game. So what do we want? A uh, stone tablet, should we go for looking for a stone tablet or the CD32? Okay, CD32. Oh, I'm just going to touch the screen because it didn't Hi, work. I am on the hunt for a oh. Sega Mega Drive CD32. It's a classic gaming console that I've been itching to add to my collection. Do you happen to have one in stock? That's a great choice, but unfortunately, we don't have the Sega Mega Drive CD32 available at the moment. Hold on, Chloe. I think I might have a solution. I recall seeing a vintage Sega Mega Drive CD32 tucked away back there. Let me go check if it's still there. Really? That would be fantastic. It seems luck might be on our side. Let's see if we can find it for you. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for going above and beyond. If we can get our hands on that console, it'll be a nostalgic blast from the past. Can't wait to experience those retro games again, especially Fantastic Sea Dizzy, Syndicate and Theme Park. Ooh, it needs sound effect on the going through the portal. Uh, oh, it's just like downstairs. Well, not really. Oh, here's Walter. He was going to tell me a riddle or ask me a riddle to solve, but we kind of didn't do that. Kind of ran out of time. So it's like, here, have this thing. <laughs> Find it on Wikipedia. <laughs> I've got good news. I found the Sega Mega Drive CD32 you were looking for. Yeah, shut up. Put the riddles in. We'll put the riddles in. But if you look now, it is on your phones, or if you've downloaded the app. So. And if we have, if anyone offends, you can just change it. You yeah. can change it instantly. The first, the first thing that's going to happen to a community project or a hobby project is you'll get approached by, by a lawyer saying, take that down or pay the fees. Yeah, so take that down. Done. It's like, so it's quite. No, not at all. I mean, um, that's a bit like saying, you can't create a website um, with using images off the internet. And if you did, and you used an image that somebody had got offended with, you just swap the image out. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing here. It's, it's a little bit like website development and the, to create things that run on your mobile phone. What if the end goal of this, I know this is just a little yeah. outdated, was to publish something under your own company? Or yeah. Would you use this as a, only as a prototype to help you get there? Or would, would you have Could. to develop it? Have a lot further. Yeah. Um, but there's no harm in using the text that we've generated. There's no harm in using the the artwork that we've generated. Um, I even argue that we're not using Argos's logo, and Argos is a Greek city. And we we make a joke in there. I think you might be looking for the other Argos, a Greek city. Because she says, why are you here looking for this stone tablet? She said, um, my ancient writings have, set, have, have spoken of the place of the, the mythical t um, place of Argos. That's why I'm here. And she says, and, um, the jockey says, 
think you might be looking for the eight to the city of Ireland. If you, in Greece. if you baked these things into professional games and you published on cartridges and CDs and stuff, you'd have all sorts of problems. We did Theme Park, um, and that was sponsored by Midland Bank. It had Midland Bank logo on the front page. That caused an awful lot of problems because HSBC took over Midland Bank and just, as we just as we were releasing the game, and it had to be pushed back a little bit for us to change the logo because they didn't want Midland Bank logo on a video game that would be sitting there for some time. But in the world that we live in now, where everything is updated instantly, you can update and change these things. Um, and we're making a community toy, tool, to make games or make these interactive narratives. People put stuff in. If it, it does say, like, you have to tick a little box when you upload the images, like, I, I accept that this is my liability or whatever. And if someone gets in trouble, it's like, well, take that. We, we can take down the whole title, or they can swap out the image that it offends. Um, and yeah, it's like, go make a game and do everything yourself. It's not, probably not going to happen, is it? Whereas we're saying, look, we made a game, not quite finished, in four hours. We used a lot of AI tools. Um, and those AI tools are getting better and better and better. Uh, so we've recently been looking. Hello. Hello, yeah. Um, those AI tools are getting better every day. Um, I can see that in a couple of years' time, we can be having um, lots of scenes with like 3D, 3D renders of characters walking around 3D worlds. Um, we are not actually going to be um, throwing around a, a live engine of 3D stuff, but we can record videos out and just put the videos in. So we could have um, Walter, the janitor, appear beautifully walk around, look at you, uh, talk to you, and walk away. And it's just a bit of pre-recorded video that we've generated in one of these sort of generative um, 3D sort of uh, tool sets. Yep. OK. Any, I don't know any other questions? Because I think we're going to be kicked out shortly, aren't we? Any other questions? Sorry we didn't get to achieve everything. Um, if you check back um, in a few days' time, you'll see that we've, we'll, put all the, we'll, we'll tidy it up and finish it off. Um, but it will be a few days because tomorrow's Father's Day, so we've got to, uh, we're, we're going to be busy. All righty. Uh, thank you very much. Steve. Thank you. They done very well, didn't they? <laughs> right, we are closing in five minutes. I know we were very tight. And they've done a great job, like all the rest of us, as in all the guests, the people that helped us, bits and pieces. Where's Gareth? I think he's gone home. He's done a runner. He's a lot to answer for. Well, hopefully we'll catch you on the next one, yeah? <laughs>